Yes, Mother Jeeva. Yes, Mother Jee. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol, Mother Jee. Hari Bol, Gita Mala. And some who else is on? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hey Tanya, you've been pretty you've been pretty steady. Hari Bol Radhika. Rashraj is here. Rashraj Nanda Gopal. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, that's a good beginning. Uh everybody try to be careful. Try to keep your hands and feet clean. Okay. Yeah. Try to be careful. You guys, it's, it's everything froze. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, yes we can. Yes, Ravaji. How about seeing me? Do you see my, do I, am I moving my, or is it just a still picture? No, it's a really bright and shiny picture, like a effulgent. Well, yes. Somebody gave me this curtain. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's so very it? good, Prabhuji. I like it. You like it? It's a little small on me. I think the person who gave it to me wants it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's okay. Taller than I am. I won't mention his name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this no, it's a he. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with reading the, uh, the introduction. Everyone can read it together. Om Ajnana Timiranda Ajnana Shalakya 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 Ajnana one day, one day, God, Krishna, Krishna, Rishnano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Chakalpata Rubyascha Vakundu Pia Evacha Patitanam Pavane Pio Vaishnavipio Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadhara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare well, Thank you all for tolerating me for maximum of an hour. We'll see if we can end a little sooner. Everyone knows about nine o'clock tonight. Yes, Prabhuji. Anyone who doesn't know about nine o'clock tonight? No, Prabhuji. Okay. Okay. So we're reading from text 39, chapter 10, 39, is page 549. Does everyone have it in their books open? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, so we can chant. Well, you can repeat. Yachapi sarva bhutanam. Yachapi sarva bhutanam. Bijam tad aham arjuna. Bijam tad aham arjuna. Natad asti vina yatsyam. Natad asti vina yatsyam. 
Maya Bhutam Chara Charam Maya Bhutam Chara Charam Yachapi Sarva Bhutanam Yachapi Sarva Bhutanam Bhuntad Aham Arjuna Bijam Tad Aham Arjuna Ad Asti Vina Yachyan Na tadasti vinayatyam Maya bhutam chara charam Maya bhutam chara charam Yat chapi sarva bhutanam Yat chapi sarva bhutanam Om tad aham arjuna Bijam tad aham arjuna Ad asti vinayatyam Nata asti vinayatsyam Maya bhutam chara charam Maya bhutam chara charam Yatcha Yatcha pi sarva bhutanam Yatcha pi sarva bhutanam Bijam tadaham arjun Bijam tadaham arjun Natad asti vinayatsyan Natad asti vinayatsyan Maya bhutanam chara charam Maya bhutanam chara charam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Bijam tad aham arjuna Bijam tad aham arjuna Na tad asti vinayatsyan Na tad asti vinayatsyan Maya bhutam chara charam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Bijam tad aham arjuna Bijam tad aham arjuna Na tad asti vinayatsyan Na tad asti vinayatsyan Maya bhutam chara charam Maya bhutam chara charam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Bicham tad aham arjuna Bicham tad aham arjuna Na tad asti vinayatsyan Na tad asti vinayatsyan Maya bhutam chara charam Maya bhutam chara charam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Bijam tad aham arjuna Bijam tad aham arjuna Natadasti vinayatsyan Natadasti vinayatsyan Maya bhutam chara charam Maya bhutam chara charam Sarva bhutanam Yachapi sarva bhutanam Bijam tad aham arjuna Natad asti vinayatsyam Mayabhutam chara charam Yat Whatever Whatever. Cha. Cha. Also. 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 Api. Api. May be. May be. Sarva Bhutanam. Sarva Bhutanam. Of all creations. All creations. Bijam. Bijam. Seed. Tat. Tat. That. 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 Aham. 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 I am. I am. Arjuna. Arjuna. O Arjuna. O Arjuna. Na. Na. Not. Not. But. That. 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 Asti. Asti. There is. There is. 
without, without. 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 Yat. 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 Which. 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 Yat. 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 Exist. Exist. Maya. Maya. Me. 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 Bhutam. Bhutam. Created being. Created being. Chara acharam. Chara acharam. Moving, non moving. Moving, non moving. Furthermore, O Arjun, I am the generator being of all existence. There is no being moving or non moving that can exist without me. Purport. Everything has a cause, and that cause or seed is is that cause or seed of manifestation is Krishna. Without Krishna's energy, nothing can exist. Therefore, he is called omnipotent. Without his potency, neither the movable nor the immovable can exist. Whatever exists is not founded on the energy. Whatever exists is not founded on the energy of Krishna is called Maya, that which is not. Maam Vishnu Badaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharane Nivasesa Sanyavadi Pastachati Satarane. Okay, the translation again. Furthermore, O Arjun, I am the generating seed of all existence. There is no being, moving or non moving, that can exist without me. In the purport, the first line, everything has a cause. And that cause or seed of manifestation is Krishna. Krishna is the cause of all causes. You know, everything we find is a cause of this, is a cause of that, is a cause of that, is a cause of that. And if you go back, the original cause is Krishna. Krishna is the cause of all causes. Someone may say, you know, uh, what's the cause of Krishna? But there is no cause. Krishna is the end the, at least as far as we can conceive, we understand that Krishna is the, the uh, original absolute person. And we can't question where did he come from. He is where we come from. That's all we can know. Uh, if we try to go the other way and try to figure that out, we just, it, you just can't go anywhere. It's just, just mind boggling. Even just to understand Krishna, is mind boggling. So let's first start with understanding Krishna, understanding all of different energies, understanding everything we see is in relationship to Krishna. Everything is in relationship to Krishna. So we have to try to see it as being in relationship to Krishna. So without Krishna's energy, nothing can exist. Therefore, he is called omnipotent. So it's, 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 there is nothing without his energies. Nothing exists. It's all Krishna and his energies. Uh, someone or some atheists may argue that we're just accepting this because we're saying there's no nothing beyond Krishna. But by accepting it, our lives become peaceful and we can see Krishna working in everything. We can see how Krishna is, is directing us in certain ways that it's the actual proper right way of doing something. Like we may not, even materially, we may not know something material, what to do about something. But if we take shelter of Krishna, Krishna will give us the, the, proper, uh, the proper thing to do and he will convey it to us if we're actually trying to surrender to him what we should do, even materially not just on, on spiritually, because we're in this material world. When I say materially, materially, I mean mainly externally. In other words, we want to do something for Krishna, we want to do the best thing for Krishna, but we may not know exactly what is the best way I can serve Krishna, or what is the best thing I should do in this particular situation. But if we sincerely take shelter of Krishna, he will direct us, and then we will see that it was definitely the right thing. I mean, we can use Srila Prabhupada as an example, who came here 70 years old with nothing and was able to create this huge organization with so many followers all over the world because he just did whatever Krishna wanted. 
and he followed the instructions of his guru to know what Krishna wanted. And also in these books, these are the instructions of our guru. Srila Prabhupada is everyone's guru, whether Shiksha or, or and Diksha or just Diksha, but he's everyone's guru. I mean, or Shiksha, I mean, just or just Shiksha guru. But he is everyone's guru. So he's given us instructions and we have to try to remember Krishna. So without Krishna's energy, nothing can exist. Therefore, he is called Omnipotent. I remember just going to uh, buy flowers here uh, in East Hartford. We have a flower place where we used to buy them, but now we mostly get them from Boston. But the person is an atheist. And I was trying to tell him that, you know, when you take shelter of God, if you surrender, uh, things happen. And he, he said he can see lots of times when you really like focus on something and then things do happen, but he doesn't want to give the credit to God, you know, but he does see that there's something beyond just, just this external energy. When you actually put yourself in a certain type of mood, mind and mindset and work for something, then, then you get some inspiration. He doesn't know that inspiration is actually coming from God, but he does recognize that something comes that wasn't there and it's nothing do, to do with this external material energy. It's something more subtle. So even people who don't believe in God can see there's something else, but they don't know what it is. So without his potency, neither the movable nor the immovable can exist. Whatever exists is not founded on the energy of Krishna is called Maya, that which is not. So anything you see separate from Krishna is Maya. We, we, we talk about Maya so much. It's an illusion. It's that which is not. And all we're doing is seeing it separate, seeing of how I can enjoy it and see, instead of seeing how we can use it for Krishna to enjoy. That's Maya. So... Uh, I'm going to read one more verse, but I think I'll see if there's any questions on this, because I know for myself that I can't remember so many different questions when somebody, like when uh, Ganapati Govins gives class, I have so many things I'd like to say or possibly even question, and I don't remember anything because he says a million things, and that, you know, unless you're really, really a shruti drawer, it's very difficult to... Uh, to remember those things. And I don't have a pen and paper to write them down. And even if I did, I'd miss something else. So I don't like writing it down. So on that note, does anyone have any comments or questions on this first question? This is text 39. Four. 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 Okay, go to the next verse, which I plan to read anyway. What? Somebody have a question? Somebody mm -hmm. stop. Keep the speech. Okay, let me let me say this. I notice a, a bunch of people have muted, which is fine. You should, you should all mute your, your, your own. Yourself. And then if you have a question, you want to mute. But while I'm going to be doing the verse, I'm going to mute everyone so we don't hear any background sounds either. Okay, text 40. You can all, well, you can all repeat. Nantas, not, Nantosti Mama Divyanam. Nantosti Mama Divyanam. Putinam Parantapa. Putinam Parantapa. Esha Deshata Prokto. O mighty conqueror of enemies, there is no end to my divine manifestations. I have spoken to you but a mere indication of my infinite opulences, purport. As stated in the Vedic literature, although the opulences and the energies of the Supreme are understood in various ways, there is no limit to such opulences. Therefore, not all the opulences and energies can be explained. Simply a few examples are being described to Arjuna to pacify his inquisitiveness. 
uh, translation again, Almighty Conqueror of Enemies, there is no end to my divine manifestations. What I have spoken to you is but a mere indication of my infinite opulences. So I think everyone can understand that these are just like a little sample <coughs> of Krishna's opulences. <coughs> and, and, and also, let's see, being our true pacifier's inquiry, I think it was, let me just, I'm just going back a few verses here. Uh, well, Krishna, Arjuna tells Krishna, Oh, Krishna, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. Neither the demigods nor the demons, O oh Lord, can understand your personality. Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own internal potency. O oh, supreme person, origin of all, Lord of all beings, God of gods, Lord of the universe. Please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you pervade all these worlds. So this is where Arjuna is asking him. So he's answering this question. This is the relationship between the spiritual master and the disciple. Uh, please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you pervade all these worlds. O Krishna, O Supreme Mystic, how shall I constantly think of you? And how shall I know you? In what various forms are you to be remembered? O Supreme Personality of Godhead. O Janardhan, again, please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulences. I am never satiated in hearing about you, for the more I hear and the more I want to taste the nectar of your words. So, and, and, and in this particular verse, Krishna is answering him, and Prabhupada in the purport says, Simply a few examples are being described to Arjuna to pacify his inquisitiveness. So he asked this question and it's being answered. Almighty conqueror of enemies, there is no end to my divine manifestations. What I have spoken to you is but a mere indication of my infinite opulences. Okay, is it muted everybody? Mm -hmm. So you can unmute. Okay. Uh, it was, these are very, very short purports, so, but I will ask if anybody in between verses, if anybody has any questions. Any questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Who's talking? Uh, this is Nanda Gopal. Yes. In the translation, it said that my divine manifestations. So my divine manifestations means just all the avatars of Krishna or what? Like what is the, what contains in my divine manifestations? Okay, my understanding is all these different things that uh, we'll go back to the one that you seem to like. Uh, this is a, a, of, of, all suppress, of, of all means of suppressing lawlessness. I am punishment. So in one sense, this punishment is one of Krishna's divine manifestations. Uh, and why did you say I like that? Well, because yesterday. <laughs> <I thought that. laughs> oh, no, it's going to Didn't you ask about that yesterday? Yes, I did. I did. I did. Uh, I just, I'm just being a little suspicious here that you liked it. You were more into the forgiving part, I know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I may be on the other side. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, Prabhu? Yes. If you're watching a Krishna conscious thing on TV, is that Maya? No. No, that's a good question. Because anything can be used in Krishna's service. The TV can be used in Krishna's service if you're watching about Krishna or things that can help you. When you're serving Krishna, that's not fair. It's, it's Maya is when you're using something, you can even use, okay, this is a material example that can be used in Krishna's service. So you can even have the scriptures and people can use them in Krishna's service or you can use them not in Krishna's service. I mean, you can think of different ways, uh, very offensive ways you can use these scriptures. You know, you can, I don't want to say different ways you can use it, but you can use, let's just say other books. 
You can use them because you got to reach on up to something and you have to step on it. You put a foot in it to reach up. Not going to do anything bad. So that would be, that, so you can't say that this book is, is spiritual because you can use it. And it directs you, puts you in direct contact with Krishna and Srila Prabhupada. But you have to use it a certain way. And basically, you just have to read it, which is the purpose of the book. But anything, anything can be used in Krishna's service. Srila Prabhupada said, even the atom bomb can be used in Krishna's service. Okay. Do you know how the atom bomb can be used in Krishna's service? No. Nope. Put it on the Chinese. <laughs> no, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ed, any other questions or comments on this? I have one more very short verse in purport, if not, and then we'll go, and then I'll have questions on that. Know that all opulent, beautiful, and glorious creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. Any glorious purport, any glorious or beautiful existence should be understood to be but a fragmental manifestation of Krishna's opulence. Whether it be in the spiritual or material world, anything extraordinarily opulent should be considered to represent Krishna's opulence. So I find this verse is really, really good uh, to help one uh, not fall into Maya. Because sometimes you might see something so beautiful, something so attractive, something you're attracted to. But if you can think that that thing I'm looking at now, which is so beautiful and attractive, is just a spark of Krishna's splendor. We can imagine what Krishna is like. That's like nothing. It's, it, so we're not denying it. We're not saying, no, it's not beautiful. No, it's not opulent. No, it's not attractive. It's disgusting. We're not saying that. We're not. We're saying the truth. This is very attractive, but that's just a spark of Krishna's splendor. Just imagine how how beautiful Krishna is. There's no way you can even imagine how beautiful Krishna is. That's a spark compared to like a whole fire, and that's so beautiful. So this uh, this verse is uh, a nice verse to help. If you ever get attracted to anything in this material world, you should think of this verse. And then you're thinking of Krishna. Then that's Krishna conscious. And then you can, and, it, and it's not denying that, there's, that this thing is beautiful and attractive, that whatever it is you may be attracted to. You're not denying it, but you're seeing it in, in the proper light, that it's nothing compared to Krishna. But it is, you know, it's it's just a spark of Krishna's splendor. So, okay. Any questions? I think people might be muted. I don't know. Krishna. Okay. Anybody here? Krishna, you have a question? Yes. So, things that are not nice or not good, how should we relate those to Krishna? Okay. Things that are not nice. First of all, we have to see everything as Krishna's energy, even things that apparently like this here virus, you can say this is not nice, but this is also sent by Krishna. Not a blade of grass can move without Krishna's Krishna is allowing this to happen because it has some purpose. It's being used in Krishna's service. Uh, and, and Krishna, I mean, this is the, the, the whole thing is about the punishment, you know, to try that people are being punished because they're being uh, lawless. They're not following the laws of Krishna. So there's some reaction. We can see that in relation to Krishna. Uh, we can see other things that may seem, you know, we see a dump and it smells. And if anybody ever been to an Indian dump? I mean, an American dump is not as nearly as bad. How many people have ever been to the dump? Does anybody know what a dump is? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you know, you go and you put your trash there, and you throw your trash. In America, it's it's not generally doesn't smell so terrible because they just recycle it, they get rid of it. I drove through once with Pancharatna from Calcutta Temple to Mayapur. Through a dump, and they got the same machines and all the other things, and they have people there who are just picking up trash. I was thinking how oh, these people would be so happy at an American dump. We throw away so many good things, and in India, and people are going through the trash to find something, uh, and it stunk really, really bad. So you might say, "Well, what's the point?" How that was. Uh, so we can we we can see that as this material world is a horrible place. Krishna is showing us how horrible it is. I mean, that's just one example. There's billions of examples of how this material world is horrible, and there's a few nice things in it. So the nice things we can see is a spark of Krishna's splendor. The bad things we should see as something. I got to get out of this material world. I don't want to come back here anymore. It's a horrible per place. Birth, disease, old age, and death. I don't want this anymore. I got to go back to the world. So it's impetus. I don't know if that answers your question. Does that answer your question? Does anybody know where? Yes. Oh. Yes, Pari Prabhu. Thank you. Okay. Jiva, Jiva has a question, maybe a comment. On Raji, so could we say that since. Um, Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. One may be attracted to one thing and someone else may be attracted yeah. to something else. So this attracting force is Krishna. But just like uh, when the Vaino came, when Prabhupada was at uh, 20, 24, 26 Second Avenue, Bali, then Prabhupada said, if the Vaino thinks that the taste of the wine is Krishna, then he can become Krishna conscious. If he thinks that, yeah, yeah. that that wine is, yeah. is the... Well, Krishna is so, that attracting force. So whatever it is you're most attracted to, if you can see it in relation to Krishna, that's a really good thing. Then Prabhupada said, then he's the greatest yogi. Because we say it's the taste in water, the pure taste in water. So if you drink water and you think that this is Krishna, then you're the greatest yogi. And Prabhupada gave the example, even a wino. Drinking his wine, if he's thinking that tastes as Krishna, he's the greatest yogi. I'm not telling anyone they should drink wine. Hare, Hare Krishna, Mataji and Prabhuji. I, I always think when I knew Brahma Sangeeta Sloka, Andan Tarast Paramaduchan Tarastam Govinda Madhi Purusam Tamaham Bajami, that Govinda is in every atom of this universe. And also Kunti Devi says, you are the soul of this universe. So Krishna is in every atom, in his expense. And scientists are proving the same thing, that they cannot define where the energy comes in photons and atoms. So Krishna is in every atom, otherwise nothing can be seen, nothing can be built. In between too. He's also in between every atom. Yes. I'm not sure what's the point. I'm not sure the point you're, you're trying to make. The point is that people are saying whether good or bad, so everything is, is made of atom or Krishna's energy. Right. Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said, where we say that mind is here or in our heart, if we have technique, we will be able to show the mind, intelligence and false ego. So maybe in future scientists will be able to show for mind, which is in our heart from our Vedic philosophy and intelligence and ego, we will be able to show those things. So. So everything is Krishna's energy. Yeah, everything is definitely coming from Krishna. Everything is Krishna ultimately. But it's also philosophy isn't everything is one. It's simultaneously one and different. So we, we make distinctions too. See that in this form it is good, just like 
This is what Lord Chaitanya told his mother. Lord, oh, his mother told him when he was eating dirt. Why are you eating dirt? He said, what's the difference? The dirt is, is uh, it's earth. The trees come, the plants come. We offer the plants. It's the same thing. And he said, it's the same thing in that sense, but it's different. You make the distinction. You don't eat the dirt. You eat the, you know, so, you know, you eat the vegetables or the fruits, which come from the, the earth. Uh, so we have to make both. We have to see the oneness and we also have to see the difference simultaneously, inconceivably. And we have to see it's all Krishna. Prabhuji? Yes. Is Radha more beautiful than Krishna or is it vice versa? Krishna is the most beautiful. What is he? Three times more? <laughs> it said, Prabhupada said that his name, chanting, Krishna is three times more powerful than chanting Ram. Oh, okay. What? Did you say Radha or did you say Ram? Radha. 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 Oh. Oh, mm -hmm. Radha. Well, that's a good question. I I would probably stick. I, I think it depends on who you are, but I would say Radha. And I don't think Krishna would be offended if we say Radha is more beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Each one of your beauty increases, so we can see the other's beauty. Thank you. And she's Madana Mohana Mohini. Right. <laughs> Maljiva, can you repeat that? <laughs> One's beauty enhances the other. And then when they see each other, their attraction grows, and then when one sees that, he becomes more beautiful. It's just like a competition. It's ever increasing. Okay, thank you. I would say it's safe to say Radharani is more beautiful. <laughs> yeah, she attracts even Krishna. Krishna is only attractive. Radharani attracts Krishna. And she's attracted to him. So. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, which one should I read? I just read this one. Okay, I want to go over something else. I found this really nice. Jeeva sent it to me. She found it. And I mean, it's it's just a letter. I want to explain a few things before I go over this letter. Uh, Can you mute everyone, Pierre? Um, yeah. Okay. Everyone's muted. Now this, what's really nice, there are many things in this letter that are really nice, but I think what, what the things that I get, get out of it is Srila Prabhupada, how great he is, how kind he is, how compassionate he is, and how much time he takes with just one person. Like when we're reading his books, you can say, well, he's writing that for everybody. But even just for one devotee, he writes this nice long letter and explaining or answering all of his questions. And it's really nice. And I'm going to make some comments as I read it. This is to Tushta Krishna. Now, Tushta Krishna, you, you have to know, you probably, many of you don't know the history, but there is a devotee named uh, Siddha Swarup Ananda, right? Siddha Sarupananda. Oh, I can. Okay. He was Siddha Sarup, and then when he got initiated, or when he took sannyasi, he became Siddha Sarupananda. He is actually Tulsi Gabbard. She's following him. She's not really following Iskand. He's he was a disciple. He's a, he is a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, but he was a little bit separate. Devotees had a lot of complaints about him. So now this is to one of Siddha Sarup's uh, followers, who is also, of course, following Prabhupada, because Siddha Sarup is trying to follow Prabhupada, but he doesn't follow Prabhupada the same as everyone else. He wants to just follow Prabhupada, but not anybody else. This is Siddha Sarup. Now, this devotee, Tushta Krishna, well, I'll read it, and then I'll go over it if you have any if you have any questions. Well, I'll try to answer them before you ask. And Prabhupada says, please accept my blessings. I am in due receipt of your letters, more than one, 
dated November 18th, November 22nd, and December 3rd, 1972. And I have heard that you are having some difficulties. So I have sent Siddha Sarup there to help you. Now Siddha Sarup is the pers this person, Tushta Krishna looks up to Siddha Sarup very much. Now try to keep a cool head under all circumstances and always remember that Krishna will protect you in any case. You haven't to worry anything. It's, it's nice, that he, you, know, you don't have to worry about anything. Just keep a cool head and, you know, do your service. I think that without you in New Zealand, in, in the New Zealand affair will not go on. But now you are leaving there to live on some farm in Australia. Of course, our serving Krishna is voluntary affair. So what can I say? If you think that is the best choice, I must agree. Otherwise, you might go away altogether. Anyway, we shall discuss in detail if I come there in future. So now, this he wants to leave his position in New Zealand. Prabhupada's saying, if you leave, the whole thing's going to fall apart. But if you want to go to this farm in Australia, what can I say? It's voluntary. I can't make you do this. But if you want, that's, hope. that's fine. You can go. And better you do that. I guess this is probably an ISKCON farm. Better you do that because if I say no, then you may leave Krishna consciousness altogether. That's uh, really nice. So now, regarding your questions in the letter of November 18th, 1972, you have asked me if the spiritual master is ultimately Krishna. So the answer must be that if you think that way, then everyone is Krishna. If you think the spiritual master is Krishna, then you're going to think everyone is Krishna. So why we should think like this? Shaktyavesh avatar means a living entity, but he is specially empowered. Not that he is Krishna, but on account of his exalted position, he is honored as much as Krishna. Not that he is Krishna. That is Mayavadi. You know, to think that the guru, like, like the Christians say, many Christians, not all, say that Jesus is God. That's Mayavad philosophy. So this is Mayavadi. He acts in the position of Krishna, but he is not Krishna. He is very dear to Krishna. That is explained. Here the verse was quoted, Yasya Prasadat Bhagavat Prasadat. The spiritual master is acting in the position of Krishna because he is the most confidential servant of Krishna. So that's the first question. Is the spiritual master Krishna? No. Your next question. After leaving this material realm, does the devotee remain forever with his spiritual master? The answer is yes. But I think you have got the mistaken idea in this connection. Now, Prabhupada, he thinks. Prabhupada knows. He knows the person's heart. He may not even have asked this, but Prabhupada is telling him. I think you have got the mistaken idea in this connection. You speak of pure devotee, that he is Shaktivesh avatar, that we should obey him only. These things are the wrong idea. So you may have thought that too. You should obey him only. These things are the wrong idea. If anyone thinks like that, that a pure devotee should be obeyed and no one else, that means he is a nonsense. We advise everyone to address one another as Prabhu. Prabhu means master. So how the master should be disobeyed. Others, they are also pure devotees. All of my disciples are pure devotees. Anyone sincerely serving the spiritual master is a pure devotee. It may be Siddha Sarup or others. A Siddha Sarup. I like the way Prabhupada, because he thinks Siddha Sarup is pure, but the others aren't. So Prabhupada says Siddha Sarup or, like in Sanskrit, he says a Siddha Sarup, like the opposite of Siddha Sarup. This must be very clearly stated. It is not only that your Siddha Sarup is a pure devotee and not others. Do not try to make a faction. Siddha Sarup is a good soul, but others should not be misled. Anyone who is 
surrendered to the spiritual master is a pure devotee. It doesn't matter if Siddha Sarup or non Siddha Sarup. Amongst ourselves, one should respect others as Prabhu, Master, one another. As soon as we distinguish here is a pure devotee, here is a non pure devotee. That means I am a nonsense. Why, why you only want to be in the spiritual sky with Siddha Sarup? Question mark. Why not all? If Siddha Sarup can go, why not everyone? Siddha Sarup will go. You will go. Shama Sundar will go. All others will go. We will have another ISKCON there this in the spiritual world. And then Prabhupada says, of course, Mr. Nair must stay. <laughs> so those people who have read Leela Mrita and other books should know who Mr. Nair is. Uh, and I'll go over that later if anybody has that question. And if somebody does not go, then I shall have to come back to take him there. One should remember this and every one of my disciples should act in such a way that they may go with me and may not have to come back to take another birth. As for your next question, can only a few pure devotees deliver others? Any, that's the question. Can only a few pure, uh, pure devotees deliver others? Anyone, if he is pure devotee, he can deliver others. He can become spiritual master. But unless he, unless he on that platform, he should not attempt it. Unless he is, this is Prabhupada's letter, so it's, a, it's in not necessarily proper English. But unless he is on that platform, he should not attempt it. Then both of them will go to hell like blind men leading the blind. I'll read this whole, that paragraph is short. Again, as for your next question, can only a few pure devotees deliver others? Anyone, if he is pure devotee, he can deliver others. He can become spiritual master. But unless he is on that platform, he should not attempt it. Then both of them will go to hell, like blind men leading the blind. Next, you ask, if I am present in my picture and form, it's a good question. Yes, in form as well as in teachings. To carry out the teachings of Guru is more important than to worship the form, but none of them should be neglected. Form is called Vapu and teachings is called Vani. Both should be worship. Vani is more important than Vapu. Your next question is, should we love Krishna or love the spiritual master? You cannot go to Krishna directly, loving him, loving him. It is common sense that if Krishna is the object of your love, his pet dog is also the object of your love. Friends meet friends. And if the friend is with his dog, the gentleman pats his dog first, is it not? So the man becomes automatically pleased, his dog being patted. I have seen in your country. The conclusion is this. Without pleasing the spiritual master, he cannot please Krishna. If anyone tries to please Krishna directly, he is fool number one. Hoping this meets you and your good wife, Krishna Tulsi Dasi, in good health and devotional mood. Your ever well wish AC Bhaktivedanta Swami. He doesn't say Prabhupada. We call him Prabhupada. Okay, I unmuted. Did anybody have any comments or questions? No comments or questions? Everyone who knows knows who Mr. Nair is? No, I had to. Yes, Prabhupada. Does anyone not know who Mr. Nair is? I don't know, Prabhuji. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'd recommend reading the, I'm going to tell you, but reading the uh, Leela. Mr. Nair, when Prabhupada bought the Mumbai or Bombay property, he bought it from Mr. Nair. And Mr. Nair tried to cheat him in so many ways. And, uh, 
this, this, it, it's a very complicated, long story. But ultimately, this Mr. Nair was so bad, so offensive, that Krishna killed him. <laughs> and, then, and then he was haunting his wife. His wife went to Prabhupada and told her. And he said, well, if you sign this papers over, I mean, we weren't stealing in it. We were buying it. He was trying to steal all the money. If you just sign the agreement we made, then he won't bother you anymore. So she signed it and he didn't bother her anymore. But he's not going back to the spiritual world, Prophet said in this letter. <laughs> not at this time anyway. Okay, any other comments or questions? Is there anything I read in that letter that stands out in your mind? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. So in the in the letter it said that all of my disciples will come back to me in the spiritual world. So that was really enlivening to hear from Srila Prabhupada. He also said Iskon will be there. Yeah. That means you. Also Prabhupada said everyone. Anyone who is asking his spiritual master's order, he is a pure devotee. What? Anyone what? Anyone obeys order of their spiritual master, he is a pure devotee. Yeah, if one is following strictly the instructions of the, the pure devotee, he is also a devotee. Right. I like so much how Srila Prabhupada took so much time just to try to correct this one person, try to help them. You know, it's like some of us didn't have the patience, uh, speaking of myself in particular, to, to try to explain every single, every single answer, every single one of his questions. I mean, I, I might answer them, but Prabhupada answered not just one, he had thousands of disciples. And, and so many of them were writing him, and he'd answer them all. And there was no email. This is all handwritten or typed out. Maybe typed, his secretary may have typed them. Yeah. But they're all written. Where is the Tushta Krishna now? I don't know. I know he was around for quite a while, but I don't know where he is now. It's a good question. You can look it up. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's... T-U-S-T-A. I know. I see his name in uh, um, Sham Sundar Das's book, which I'm reading right now a lot. I don't know where you, but you can probably Google it, Sundar Das, and you can let us know. Mm. Okay. And not, any other questions or comments? We have another phone call. Hey, uh, this is Amit. Yes. So I have a quick question, right? So oftentimes we hear in Prabhupada's purport and even in the letter, um, the word pure devotee and devotee. And so what is this distinction? I don't, I never understand it. Um, um, does it, when it, when Prabhupada says pure devotee, meaning like Uttam Bhakta or Uttam Adhikari versus Madhyama or Kanishta or so, uh, how this word is being used? Um, uh, uh, pure devotee versus devotee. Anyone who is actually surrendering and doing what they're, they're instructed to do by the spiritual master would be considered a pure devotee. Satsup Maharaj many years ago said, it's kind of like when you're in the shower, you're considered clean. Even though you may not be clean, as long as you stay in the shower, you're going to be clean. Uh, like if you just jumped out, then you may not be fully clean. So similarly, uh, in Christian consciousness, you're considered like you're in the shower, you're, you're doing what you have to do, you're considered pure. And, so, yeah. and Jiva has something to say. Well, there's different ways of classifying things. Pure can also mean not tinged with jnana and yoga, you know? It, it's... Um, hmm. Pure bhakti is mixed with... Yeah. Bhakti. yeah. And your intention, you know, the sincerity is there. Like you said, mm -hmm. if you continue, then you will be pure. It's like devotional service. 
It may not be pure devotional service, but it's leading to pure devotional service. You know, like bhakti. We're not doing pure bhakti, but if but it's going to lead to pure bhakti, so therefore it's bhakti. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to have to end now because I don't want to ever go over time because I know I may take less time sometimes, but uh, uh, it's, we got two minutes left. So let's off our respectful business and otherwise the devotees of the Lord. We just like this to be the desires of everyone and a full of compassion for the See you soon, like a night.